Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today, we're taking a look at the brand new update that is currently available for Pixel Logic ZBrush 2021.7. So, the folks at Pixel Logic have actually gone ahead to announce a brand new update that comes with a couple of improvements and features for ZBrush. And you'll notice something that once you go over to the feature page, which I'm going to put a link in the description, most of the tags here deals with the word it. So, you can see there's a slice and dice it, there's a stage it, there's a bevel it, and interpolate it, mirror it, adjust it, and so much more. Now, some of these features or some of the tools which you'll be working with or which you would see as new updates are sort of tools that previously had their own, you know, ways that you can get them done. But it seems to be like the folks at Pixel Logic have actually tried to do something that deals with quality of life improvement for some of the tools. So with that said, we're going to dive directly into ZBrush and check out some of these tools and see how they actually work. So with ZBrush simply open right here, you would notice that the ZBrush 2021.7 looks, you know, relatively the same. The only big difference which you would notice is right here. Right here, we have three new buttons which deals with adjust last, replay last, and replay last relative. So they are mostly doing exactly the same thing. So how this one works is quite simple. If you make a mask, let's say hold on control and click and make a simple mask like so, what you can do is you can now use the adjust last to adjust your last stroke. So you can adjust the opacity of your last stroke. At this point, if you click and drag, you can notice that we're adjusting the opacity and we can actually punch this all the way up to darken it or, you know, simply expand it. And you can do this for as long as you want. So we can push this to this point and get that and then push it a little bit more and then push it a little bit more. And this same thing applies to your brush strokes as well. Now, something else which is also very cool, especially for brush strokes, is you can also choose to make this subtractive. So at this point, this additive is adding up and we can push this all the way down to even make it subtractive. And that looks really cool. So you can see that there and we can push this all the way up and actually push this all the way down depending on what we want to create. And this is definitely gonna come in handy for those working with alphas and also for those working with details. Another thing which you can now do is once you click and drag, you can choose to replay your last stroke. So I can click and get the same last stroke, last stroke, and you can see how cool this is. So with that said, if you also look at the tools section or if you look at any of the menus that you have, so in this case, we have this menu, Instead of clicking with your mouse and dragging all the way up to review other stuff, you can now use your mouse wheel to simply scroll up and scroll down. So you can also do the same thing here, scroll up, scroll down. And this is going to be very useful, especially for those who like to navigate across tons of menus like this, or probably you don't have a custom menu. This is definitely going to come in very, very handy. Now, speaking about things that would come in very handy, you can now boost and dilute your mask. So what does that mean? If we choose to make a simple mask and we go over to our masking section, we can now choose to boost this mask, which is pretty nice. Of course, you can see that and then you can dilute the mask. So this is definitely going to be very useful for lots of people because this doesn't really look like what you could get with the other type of method that we had before, which is if you click and drag, you know, and you have this like so, and then you proceed to hold on control and alt to sort of sharpen this, you notice it becomes softer and rounded. Now this sort of eliminates that particular thing as what you can get is you can choose to boost the mask or you can simply choose to dilute the mask and get it smaller or, you know, just boost it overall and get it even way sharper than you could actually get in the beginning. And that's one of the things that the folks at Pixel Logic are doing at this point, trying to make those tiny interpolations between things that you wish you could do before and things that you can actually do. Now, speaking about that, there is also this nice cool update that is also available that you can use to flip possible symmetry mask. This is also going to be very nice, especially for those who are trying to make decisions on where certain, you know, poly paint or mask is supposed to exist at a given point, or maybe you just want to flip this back and forth. This feature is definitely going to come in handy. There's also a new update that deals with mask changed points. What does this one mean? If, for example, we proceed to select our brush and we do something like this, and let's say you want to mask this. Of course, you know, going in to mask this might take some time. So what you can now do is to simply click on mask change points and there you have it. So once you have that, you can proceed to boost this mask and that is all you need to do. And at this point, you can now go in and do some amazing things depending on what you like to create. And this will save you a whole lot of headache. So for those who have been wondering, you know, when is this ever going to come? Yep, it is right here. And you can now take advantage of this and start doing some very creative things. 
Now, this is not only available for masking, all right? It's really cool, I know, I know, but it's not only for masking, it's also available for your polygroups. So once you make your last stroke, you can now go over and click on group by changed points. And that way, once you click on this and you switch over to your polyframe, you can see it. So let's actually undo that so that you guys can see what we had before and then you can see what we have right now. And I know most of you guys may have been wishing and praying for this particular tool and right here it is. And of course there is more. So more stuff you can do with this. So what if you could actually go back in the history and make some updates? So what I'm talking about is this, that if you make a stroke and then you make another stroke and you make another stroke and you make another one and another one, let's say you just love stroking stuff here, and at a point you wish all of these strokes at individual polygroups or, you know, they're just a polygroup. How can you now do this? So what you can do is you can go all the way back. We can go all the way back to the undo point, hold down control and click, and then go over to the most recent part or, you know, the most recent point, which you have your stuff and now click on group changed point. Now, once you do that and you switch your polygroup, you would notice that you have this right here. And this can be used for a whole lot of things. So in this case, we can also go over to a point like so, and we can choose to just make something like that and make something else and make something else. And then we can go all the way back, back, back. And at this point, we can hold down control and click, move over to the final point and then click on group change point. And there you have it. And this is just one of those nice things that can make your life even way easier. And you know what? At any point you're done with these things, you can also proceed to play with the adjust last. So this is also very, very useful. And lots of people would find working with this tool impressive. Now, with that said, let's take a look at some new updates or some new tools that you can now have access to if you're working with the most recent version of ZBrush. And this deals with a new set of brush that now exists with ZBrush. One of them is the Bevel Arc and also the Bevel Flat. So if we take a look at the Bevel Flat, you guys would see what this actually does. So if you click, you would notice that you have this yellow and green sort of brush. You have to drag to the desired point, which you want. And what this would help you do is to make bevels at every single edge that you want. So once you have this here, all you need to do is let go and it will mark the start point and the end point and simply use both the start and the end points to create bevels for you. So this is very, very interesting. And I kind of feel like the folks at Pixelogic are actually pushing for this hard surface thing, as there's also another cool update that you can now get. So the bevel art works exactly the same way like the bevel flat. So you make a start point and an end point and just simply let go and sweep through the mesh and you'll be having an arc. There is also a very nice knife tool that they've also included. So what is this knife tool and uh, how does this knife tool work? So if we hold on control and shift, you would notice that we have some sort of stroke brushes that we can use to cut through meshes and do some stuff. And the most notable one is the trim curve and also the trim rectangle. And these two are mostly used by hard surface artists to cut through meshes. But then these meshes, when you cut through them, they do leave some sort of artifacts. And that is what the knife tool is actually here to fix now with the knife tool you can now get a very nice cutout once you're making your stuff so i can click and drag double tap with the alt click to a point double tap click to this point double tap the alt key and uh, click all the way out and what the knife tool will help you do is to get a clean cut whenever you're cutting out your model so for hard surface artists this is definitely one of those things that you would find interesting to work with now one more cool feature which i think we should talk about or actually two more cool features which I think we should talk about include the stage it and the interpolated. So how the interpolated works is really, really nice. So at any point you are trying to make stuff, I'm just going to go ahead and get read. And if I click and drag, let's reduce this. If I click and drag, you notice we made a single stroke there. I can also come through and make another stroke at this point. And in most cases, you would like to have a progression of this stroke all the way to that one from this one down to this part and you probably don't know how to get that happening or you know you're just going to end up having some human errors while trying to make this what the folks at pixel logic have added is once you create your two strokes the start stroke and the end stroke you can go over to the stroke section and you can click on this word interpolate so let's take a look at one good example so i'm going to click and drag and then click and drag at this point click and proceed to interpolate this and it's going to interpolate this across 
So the same thing happens. So we can also say, you know, we we'll like to make a curve and then make a, a straight line at the point like this. Click on stroke, go over to the interpolate section, click on interpolate, and we can have that. And you can also control the stroke count. So the stroke count uh, accounts for the adjustment. So you can increase the stroke count. Let's make that by 10. Click on interpolate one more time, and we're going to get 10. And you can do this for lots of things. It's also worth mentioning that once you've interpolated the first time, you need to undo it and then interpolate it again before you get like the appropriate ones that you want. If you choose to just hit interpolate after you've increased the stroke count, you might end up having some very undesirable results like this. So except maybe you're going for something like this, then you can have fun working with it. And I think this is definitely going to be one of those cool things that lots of people will also love to work with. Now, with that said, let's also take a look at something else. So we have this nice model piece here. And what we would like to look at is the brand new Stage It feature that now exists with ZBrush. So at certain points, you like to have a hold of your model. And, you know, you just want to work on this model independently. Of course, that feature had existed before and that had to do with the solo button. So at this point, you can go solo and do some stuff like that. This was really nice. I mean, lots of people love this and uh, I actually love working with that. And there's also this very cool feature that you can be in a poly group and you can choose to isolate that poly group, which was really nice as well. But now the folks at Pixelogic are giving you a very nice new feature, which means that you can now have a home and a target point for staging your model. So once you have the model which you would like to initialize the staging feature for, all you need to do is go over to Geometry, go all the way down, and then you can set a home point and a target point. So we would like to use this shirt as an example. So what I need to do is have that shirt selected and make it the target point. So I'm storing this target point for this object. And then if it is something I would like to work on separately, you know, I would like to scale it. I don't want to hide it. I just want to work on it separately. I can drag this all the way out, scale it, rotate it, do anything I want on this model and then set these as the home stage. So what happens is at any point, I would like to make some updates to this. I can just simply go in and uh, make some update. Let's reduce the brush size and I can make some nice updates to this depending on what you know, you're trying to create. So once you're done making this update, you can now proceed to click on switch stage. So this switches it back to the exact point where it was or where it should be. And then you can also proceed to click on switch stage again to bring this back up here. So this would give you so much you know, room to do some very nice sculpting updates, especially if you like to get your model very up close, these can come in very, very handy. And that's about it. I mean, there's a whole lot of things that you can now get for ZBrush. And of course you can simply go over to the release note and check out some of the cool and interesting features they've been modified and added to ZBrush. And ZBrush 2021.7 has a free update for anyone who already owns ZBrush. And you can simply go ahead and update yours if you have a copy. And that's about it. I'd like to know what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And if you're new here, it's gonna be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update. And until I see you guys again with a tutorial update, free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.